badly. He, he is no better now than Zach Wilson, who it feels like the – I mean, Zach Wilson's a kid. They're managing around him. And I was just looking at some numbers, adjusted yards per attempt, success rate, QBR, touchdowns. It's – Mac Jones is struggling. And I, I, I've said this before. I'm not sure Belichick is ideally built for 2022 football. Nobody's saying he's less intelligent. But 2022 football is a quarterback that can move, drafting and developing weapons offensively, and just a general feel for offense. For safety reasons, the NFL has pivoted to make the game safer. The middle of the field is now not not for safeties. It's for tight ends and wide receivers. Brady saw it coming and left town. Mac Jones, a kid, has already complained about it. Nick Saban is Belichick's best friend in coaching, but Saban did pivot. Saban was willing to hire some coaches that he was uncomfortable with and had some baggage. Lane Kiffin and at the time Sark. Bama is now more about quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs, and offensive linemen. Eight years ago, Bama was about corners, defensive linemen, and linebackers. Belichick, I don't know if it's stubborn, but he's not pivoting. Look at the most improved team in the league this year. Who is it? It's the Vikings. Really good, smart defensive coach to a kid offensive coach. Turn the season around. Last year, last year, Bengals. Bengals get to a Super Bowl offensive coach. Final four teams in the playoffs last year all had offensive coaches. Philly, the number one seed. A coach we thought was over his head, butchered his opening press conference. Number one seed, NFC. Offensive coach. It's, 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 listen, the flip phone still works, but it's not a smartphone. And you, you, you start looking at a team we think is great, Buffalo. Defensive coach, starting to unravel, not refined, don't feel like they're well coached, can't develop a run game four years in. Sometimes you're a real smart guy, you're in an industry, and the industry changes. Saban saw it and quickly pivoted. Now, it is college football, so, you know, that's obviously a lower level of coaching. The coaching at the NFL level is very, very good. Doesn't mean Belichick is less smart. But, I, you know, it's, it's funny. I, um, for a while, I lived near Hartford, Connecticut, on the East Coast. And, you know, in the 50s and 60s, it was the insurance capital of America. And that's where people put their money in the 50s and 60s. Insurance. And then... And then the 60s and 70s, it was about banking. And they didn't really pivot to that. And then the 80s and 90s was about Wall Street. And Hartford didn't really pivot to that. Now it's about tech. And Hartford's kind of one of those, one of those what do they call kind of dead American cities. The 50s and 60s, when insurance is where you put your money. Whew, Hartford rocked. And then I went into banking. And then Wall Street. And now it's into tech. And they just don't feel very vibrant. Still a beautiful, beautiful part of the country. Y y you got to adapt. And I look at New England. They don't have an offensive coordinator on the staff. They may have the weakest wide receiving core in the league. Their quarterback, Young, has already verbalized it. He's regressing badly. And welcome the Jets with one of the best pass rushes in the National Football League. You know, I said this. I think about a year ago, and I got some pushback. You know how some people, they say, some business ideas, you just came up with the idea too early. Like MySpace, we weren't ready for MySpace. And a few years later, Facebook, we were ready for Facebook, right? Like MySpace, Facebook was basically MySpace, I think with more privacy, if I've read it right. But sometimes somebody comes up with a, 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 an idea, and the, and the market's just not ready for it. And sometimes there are people, uh, you know, Bill Gates is born in 1908, He's, he's not going to, he, that brain maybe not function with the 1908 economy. And I look at Andy Reid. Andy Reid was able to get to Super Bowls, not win one, but dominate big chunks of the NFC for years when all the rules or most leaned defense. Now they lean offense and Belichick struggling to win. What if Andy Reid in this, his career, that you couldn't have hit upstairs years ago. 
You, you, the rules, safety, if the league was more aware of it 25 years ago, was more of an offensive league. It would be Andy Reid with the Super Bowls and Belichick without them. If Andy Reid can coach another 10, 11 years in this league, and he's an older guy, but if he did, and win several Super Bowls, which I think is very possible, they should be favored to win this year, and he's already got one. And Andy Reid ends up with four Super Bowls, and Belichick struggles. I think the debate of greatest coach in this era, it won't be as lopsided as it feels today. Andy was ahead of his time. Andy Reid on third down when he was in Philadelphia, third and four, third and three, Andy was the first coach in this league that said that's a passing down. That's a short passing down. He was one of the first coaches really used, really used the tight end, really saw third and two. It could be a passing down. So it, it, it's, I, I just think sometimes the world changes and, and it doesn't make you less smart, but you're just not, you're not built for it. You're not going to adapt to it. You're older, stuck in your ways. I'll give Pete Carroll credit at 70 years old. He went and got a little uncomfortable with Shane Waldron. And a lot of those draft picks this year were offensive Linemen, offensive guys, Pete loves his defense. It's paying off. So I Belichick's a great coach, but man, they don't even have an OC. Their weapons are terrible. They can't draft them. They're not developing a quarterback. Mike Zimmer's a great coach. Vikings are significantly better without him. It's not that Mike Zimmer got dumb. Mike Zimmer didn't know how to coach. But it's, you know, again, the flip phone is still a phone, but it's not a smartphone. Aaron got hurt. Record was kind of bad. But Green Bay has been in the top of this league, hovering around the top, a Super Bowl team kind of around there, right, for like, feels like forever. And they go far to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, Aaron's first year wasn't great. Last year with McCarthy, not great. And here we are now. And this morning, they're four and six. And let's look at the Green Bay Packers schedule. They are not going to win at Philadelphia and they are not going to win at Miami. I know, cheeseheads, you also thought they were going to win the division this year. They're not winning those games. So they have to win tonight. And if they win tonight, beat the Bears at Chicago, won't be easy. Beat the Rams, beat Minnesota, even though at home, not easy. Better team this year, better roster. And beat Detroit at home. Detroit just went to Chicago and won. They can score points. So I'm saying, basically... If they win tonight and win the games that won't be easy but should, could with Aaron Rodgers, they are at best 9-8. and eight. But in the NFC, you may, we talked about this yesterday, you may be able to sneak into the wild card with that. Maybe. So tonight is everything for the Packers. Oh, by the way, the Titans have announced multiple starters are not playing. Just like last week, multiple starters not playing. Add in the fact it's at Lambeau. Add in the fact it is a short week and they have to go on the road. Green Bay needs to win. Green Bay should win. And if Green Bay doesn't win, I know what you're saying. Oh, you're going to blame Aaron Rodgers. Nope. Tonight is 